so since we're on the anti-inflammatory kick, yeah. so we talked about omega three, yeah. omega six ratios a lot, yeah. and that's one of the sort of hallmarks of ancestral or or primal diet is just anti-inflammatory. Um, yeah. How do you manage that? Like, do you pay attention to that, or how did you start paying attention to omegas in general, omega fatty acids? I think back in uh, 2015 or something, I started to hear about this. And this was actually before, like kind of around the same time, I started to listen to the Primal Health Coach podcast. Yeah, and Kind of the same, like all of these things kind of took off around the same time, right? And then I got in touch with uh, a few people here in Sweden that can actually test your fatty acid levels, right? So, okay, so that's interesting. But I kind of connected this again to one how can i myself avoid injuries okay one that's one part but two and that was me even more important like for my dad and this was actually after he passed away mm. but i was still curious okay so if this if you can take a test to figure out if your diet works and your fatty acid levels i was so super curious what results would my dad have have had yeah if i could have taken a test on him because it i i I supposed it would have been horrible you know the ratios right i suppose so when i so obviously you know they 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 asked me do you want to take it yeah sure i want to take a test and this was at the beginning though i was starting to health coach and stuff so i wasn't kind of all in from the beginning or anything but i took the test and i remember how i had a result saying 6.7 to 1 ratio. So that means 6.7 as much omega-6 than omega-3. Yeah. Okay, so what what does that mean? What does it entail? So so I learned that ideal, like in, in an ideal world, you should have like a one-to-one. Yeah. So omega-3, to simplify a bit, uh, it's kind of anti-inflammatory and omega-6, it's more inflammatory, right? Yeah. You need both. They're both essential. They need both. They kind of, they they sync with each other, right? They work with each other. But now with the vegetable oils and and the food intake we have, we, we, most of us have more omega-6 than omega-3. Way more. Way more. So I had a 6.7 to 1. So that means like 6 point times. Yeah, that's, that's, you're doing well. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty, it's pretty okay, you know? If you have a three to one ratio, according to science, as I learned, that's, that's also good because it means like your cells work as they should work. Yeah. And it's not like they're working like a super level and thing. It's like, yes, they, they work as yes, they should work, like a normal level, right? And somewhere along the this the line here, I, I learned that, okay, so the average ratio in Sweden is 12 to 1. Yeah. 12 times as much omega-6 than omega-3. In the US, back, back, I think back then it was like 20, 25 or something. I was going to say, it's probably close to 30 to 1 at this point. We have so much. Everything is in veg- oxidized vegetable oil. Everything. Grains and vegetable oil is the standard American diet. Essentially, it's just yeah, it is ridiculously high. And I'm, I'm very curious what mine is because I have not tested. Because I am like, ooh, what if it's not where I think it should be for how borderline anxious I am around what I eat? Like if mine is you know ten to one, I will be so pissed. (laughs) But you know, I I tested so many people, lots of. Primal coaches. Yeah, what do you find? I find that honestly, I find that they have the same. They tend to have the same results as people out there. Yeah, often, not always. Some of them have like what shit, like two to one or something. Wow, like really good. And others have like I I remember how I did on a few carnivore, like carnivore Mm. health coaches, like I did the carnivore. And they had like 30 to 1. Wow. Oh. So how how do you translate that into the world of omegas and and like and and their reality, right? So you can do lots of different interpretations, like what sort of a meat, where does it come from, and right. so on, right? And and other people have, you know, they think they have really good diets and 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 there are health coaches and so on, but still 12 to 1. Yep. It doesn't necessarily mean that the diet is really bad or that they have they have too much vegetable oils and these right. things. Right? It can just mean they don't eat enough fish, wild right. caught fish. That could be that could be the reason, you know? 
it can be as simple as that because it's it's difficult. Like I, I learned, okay, so if you sh- if you want to have a good ratio, you should eat what is it? Like if you I, I can't remember the name and the, the the number, but a few kilos of wild caught fish a week. Yes. Like who does that? Like is it maybe two or three kilos wild caught fish a week or something? But a high amount, right? No right. one is doing that, right? Fish is it's it's quite. Even Sweden, it's more expensive. Yes, it's more difficult to get hold of. You can buy salmon, but it's farmed salmon, so it right. doesn't really work. It's like a cheap fish that, like, it's processed as well. It's difficult to get hold of. Yeah, hold off, right? Yeah, yeah, agreed. And every time I go to the grocery store, I I don't like fish that much because I just didn't grow up on it. But the grocery store I go to does have wild caught. Wild caught salmon and mm-hmm. cod on sale regularly for yeah. about the same price as like a steak, like a ribeye yeah. or a New York strip. So I will, whenever it goes on sale, I'll do that. So I, I usually get it once a week, twice a week is a good week. And that's the only real that and the smaller fish are probably a little more accessible, but they're so fishy. So primal calls it the smash hits, right? So yeah. sardines, anchovies, mackerel, sure. um, all of those things, but they're just, some people just can't do the I have trouble with the the taste. Like they're so fishy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I mean, eating them out of a little can. Totally. Like what if but you they don't, don't even have like mercury, fish? You know? Or or like I can't I can't go to a restaurant and on the menu it says right. like fish or meat or something. And I, I like nine times out of a ten I pick the meat because it just feels more fulfilling. Right. right? Like I can eat fish, but then it's just it's kind of disappears and it's lighter. Yeah, it doesn't lighter, have the right? like uh the satiating effect for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Well, so when you know when you say you're curious about your result, that, that is also a thing that I find many people are and they want to try this thing. Many people are, but they're afraid to try. Oh yeah. <laughs> because if they get their results and it's objective says tests it says, are rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's has especially for a health coach, like someone who doesn't care would be unfazed by it but if yeah. someone who is just put years of research and trial and error into their own body like most health coaches have an objective marker come back that says your diet's not working as well as you thought it was in this specific area at least that's a little rough right it is it, <laughs> it's it like is maybe it you is. don't know as well as you think yeah, you do yeah. or maybe your body just handles it differently than you thought it did which is the more the kinder approach right maybe your body just converts omegas differently but uh yeah so what why do we use that marker why is omega such a um a good marker for inflammation in general essentially it gives you um data on how well your cells work right so for instance like the cell membrane you have like the saturated solid fat and you have the omega-3 which is more flexible right polyunsaturated yeah, yeah polyunsaturated so if you have a good ratio, I think it should be like a four to one on this aspect, right? But often it's not four to one. It could be three to one. I think it's four to one. But often when we, and that is one of the, the, the data, the, one of the measurements we actually get one of the results, right? But often it's like 16 to one or more, which means you have the saturated vs the pollen saturated fat. It's like 16 times as much, which means the cell membranes are really solid, mm. which means, okay, as a primal coach or, you know, you have a primal diet, whatever diet you have, your cells can't really take up the nutrients from the food. Right. right? So they can't, and they can't release waste products either. So they work like suboptimally. Right? right. So imagine you have like a really good diet overall, you know, you have your, your other fat intake, I suppose, and nu- nutrients and vitamins, whatever. But if you can't take up the nutrients into your cell, they, they can't really work as they should work. So it's kind of a waste of time, right? It's a waste of space. Like this is kind of the precursor to anything else. So, you know, awesome. Fix your diet. Awesome. Fix your uh, work with your movement and all of these things. But maybe step one is to make sure that your cells actually work, that they actually have a good ratio. 
And obviously, it's like if you have a good ratio, you have more, your cells work as they should work, as they ideally should work, it's more anti-inflammatory. So if things happen, you know, uh, whatever, like ill airborne disease mm-hmm. or, you know, things occurring all the time, your body is able to handle it. Right. right. And what we see, and we, we, you know, when we work with this, we have certain claims we can say, uh, statements we can use, which is backed by uh, the European, um, I can't remember, I don't have it in front of me, but the authorities at the European Union level. Yeah. Right. And the, what's the name in the US? US. FDA. The FDA. Food and FDA. Drug Administration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's backed there as well. So you can actually say these things, right? Which is quite important because otherwise uh, you can come up with whatever claim. Right. Without having the backing of it, obviously. right? So when we do these tests, we have six different measurements. So I might actually open a previous test. Yeah, please. I would love some some data so give me a second yeah the literature on this is fascinating i just did a post on this and it's one of those like core things that make usually like felt noticeable changes in people's yeah. energy levels i as i remember it it was like just a better ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 making up the like cell membrane the uh, phospholipid bilayer of your cells just lets things there's more fluidity there's yeah. easier nutrient nutrient transport there's better information exchange there's better neurotransmitter access on your um, your central nervous system because that's also a fatty acid membrane so there's literally just better intracellular communication in general yeah. when you have better ratios which affects everything like you said yeah, yeah. and there's good literature on if you just type in like omega-3 on PubMed, which is the, the U.S. National Library of Medicine, uh, you'll get tons of data. And it literally makes people smarter. Sean Stevenson yeah. has had a book called, I think it was um, Eat Smarter, and it was the studies on people's gray matter in their brain. And yeah. omega-3 intake was like almost causal. Yeah. It was like yeah. really hard to disprove that it directly yeah. affected IQ. Exactly. So, okay. So here I have an example, right? So this is actually from a, a primal health coach. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's interesting, right? All right. So the, the ratio was 11 to one to one. Okay. Okay. So and that's what to what to what? 11.1 omega-6 to one omega-3. And okay. usually when we talk about this, we often talk about, okay, so what's the ratio? But there are other measurements as well. This is most, maybe this is the mostly the, the, the easiest one to understand. Right? But then we also had the, the protection value. Uh, so the protection value should be uh, 90%, meaning like you you're, you're need way more omega-3 in order to be protected against, say, uh, inflammation and these things, right? So if something happens, if you have... Your city and your city wall, at least you have a city wall, so you have something to protect yourself with if something would happen. Right. Most people, uh, actually, this this uh, coach had 0%. Wow. Like nothing. Uh, so you have your, <laughs> this analogy, right? You have your city, but you have no city wall. So if something actually happens, it doesn't need to have to happen now, but you know, you have things going on, like the common cold, you have other things going on, right? So it's more likely that this person will actually get ill. Wow. Right? So that's one of the things. You have the omega-3 index. I think that should be like 8%. That's the omega-3, total amount of omega-3 in the blood volume. Right? Mm. It should be like 8%-ish. This coach had 3.9%. Wow. And I remember clearly, like if you have below like 4%, you have a high risk of like uh, heart and cardiovascular yeah. issues and below 2%. And I've seen several below two, they have an increased risk of sudden, sudden uh, heart failure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of hardcore data, right? So obviously, yeah. as you said before, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to see my data. <laughs> you know, I, I get that. And then you have the mental strength index. So I think I think it's like 60% of your brain is just fat. It's just a yeah, big gray matter. Fat, it's right? all fat. Yeah. Yeah. 
And if, uh, yeah, like 20% ish, that's like omega three. Okay. So if you have a lower level of omega three, might you have cognitive issues, memory mm. issues, and these issues? Yeah, you might actually have that. So there you have a correlation between maybe, you know, you, you tend to forget things and, and you have difficulties in thinking, maybe like these mm. kind of, kind of vague symptoms of something mm. and you think maybe i need to talk with <clears throat> talk with someone or it's a psychological thing maybe but maybe it's just you know you don't have enough omega threes. you have the cell membrane fluidity as well which i yeah. mentioned yeah. cell membranes and arachidonic acid that's kind of how well you can use omega-6 through the liver right, as well, right? So, so you have six different measurements and for someone taking a test, you get the data, all of these six measurements, and all of them are correlated with each other, obviously. And you also get like an explanation of what each thing means. Yeah. But you also get the page, like a fatty acid panel, all of it. Yes, uh, which is ideal because most people go to the doctor and I get blood work that comes back from some of my clients, not because I asked for it, just because clients are interested to share their blood work yeah. with their coach. And I wish it were more comprehensive. Like I, I, I'm going to start doing more. The one you're describing is an at-home test, right? And you send it in. Yeah, absolutely. You take. Yeah. Uh, this is the test. I know it's a podcast. You can see, but Zenzino. I'm holding up like yeah. a box, right? So yeah. this is. It. I'll put it in the show notes because yeah, yeah, we talked about this last year, and um, this season is always my testing season. So I do yeah. all of my blood work usually in the transition from fall to winter, because that's my recalibration time. That's my, okay, how did my year work, right? Let's see trends from yeah. from the full year. So I I would love to do a, I think doctors in general should do all of these. Like I am amazed that I cannot walk into my general practitioner, my family doctor, be like, hey, yeah. can I have a full micronutrient panel? And they're like, what's that? Yeah. I'm like, like vitamins and minerals. And they're like, we can test specifically. And I was like, how do you not have a full basic vitamin mineral like all of these things would be great to know it's just like a pulse on your body right you don't have yeah. to know how to interpret them that's someone else's job or you can look up how to do it but just the fact that that isn't a such a basic test is yeah. amazing to me like hey your vitamin d3 is low or something d is low your or your boron is deficient or your copper just things that make drastic improvements or not in people's yeah. felt experience we usually only focus on blood sugar hba1c and like cholesterol that's what most people as doctors care yeah. about that's where the drugs are right? that's where the pharmaceuticals are tailored towards statins and all sorts of new drugs for affecting blood sugar but it'd be great if we had like a fatty acid panel that was cheap <laughs> agreed agreed you know, it's, yeah. I, I agree. It's kind of the, the medical medical industry, the medical occupation. It's built around, you know, another paradigm. Yeah. Totally, right? And, and uh, you know, you have and you treat symptoms. You don't treat the core issues. Right? Right. So, so obviously that's a huge, huge thing. I, I, I We have like a podcast in, in Swedish here as well. I mean, to a few like functional medicine doctors and stuff as well. Mm. And uh, so, so that is really good, but it's still, it's a small minority of uh, doctors and yeah. medical practitioners in Sweden, Scandinavia, I suppose, that actually offer uh, these tests yeah. at all. Right? So it's still quite small. Uh, and, and this test you, 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 or the results, you have the ALA, DPA, DPA, uh, EPA, DPA, yes. DHA. All the uh, omega-6, omega-9, yeah. omega saturated, all of them. You have the target value, your value, deviation, deviation in percent, right? So that's yeah. the one A4. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds comprehensive. And <laughs> that is comprehensive. I will be doing that because it's time yeah. to do that. And I've been putting it off for long enough. Yeah. There's, there is this, like, f for those that, I, I mean, some people I, I, I that take the test are kind of, most people are kind of satisfied with, you know, the, the six values and measurements and yeah. when i explain a bit kind of simplified version of it and and then we have the next group of people they want to have the panel and check out the panel yes. and then we have the next group of people that want to dive into the details and then we have like i, I think there's like 20 30 page report yeah like actually what that wow. means right so so it, it's quite comprehensive
what are the, so have, most people probably won't get the test and they'll be like, okay, but well, what would I do if my results came back poorly or were interpreted as poorly? Like, are there simple lifestyle things other than just eating wild caught cold water fish to increase all of those or to move those ratios towards more healthy values? Like what would people change regardless of what came back to move the needle towards more optimal? Yeah. So then there are two answers to that. Like one is the one you actually <laughs> answered yourself in a sense, like wild caught fish. Yeah. Uh, adjust your diet, uh, purchase it from good sources and, you know, increase the intake. You know, that thing, right? And and you can do that. Uh, we have what I believe is quite a simple solution as well. We have something called the balance oil. So we'll grab one of those bottles as well. So this is the balance oil. Yeah. Okay. So so often when I share the information about this, you know, you you tend to think it's an omega three oil or or capsules, right? But but it's I would I would say it's not. Um, if you want omega three, you can go to the pharmacy, you know, right? And and buy whatever <laughs> you find in the pharmacy. The thing with the balance oil, then it's if you think about it, it's like half 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 of it is omega three from wild caught fish. We know that is good. Half of it is polyphenols from olive oil. Yeah. Like real, really strong antioxidants. When when you consume, when you drink the balance, so you can feel it in your throat. It's like has a burning sensation. Yeah, it should tingle, right? Like high quality olive oil based. That's high quality burn. olive oil. And the key is that it's like a synergistic formula. Like the both of them together makes the balance oil or the omega free rather bioavailable. Yeah. That's the key word, right? Because we can take so many things. But if it's not bioavailable, what's the point? So like most of the products we buy in the pharmacy, in the supermarket says omega-3, you get the capsules, the vitamin or the, the antioxidants in yeah. those capsules are often quite weak. Yeah. And it's it's good to have on the on the shelf and sell them. And on the shelf, it's good. But like news, a news flash, the body's 37 degrees Celsius. It's pretty hot. Right. So when you consume those capsules, they tend to go rancid pretty fast. Yeah. And it takes time for the body to take up the omega into the system, into the cells, right? It's it's not it's not happening in an instant. Okay, so so the the question it begs the question: How do we know this? Obviously, for the test. So you can imagine person A. Person A has been taking omega three capsules for the last five years, mm. every single day, three to four capsules or whatever. They take the test, okay? So we can verify if those capsules, if that product, if it's working. You have data, you have science. Or we have the person that is eating lots of cold water fish. Maybe, you know, every other day, every day, like a lot. We can test if that diet, is, if it's enough. We have the person that, person C, I suppose that will be, the person that has, you know, they don't haven't done any dietary change at all. We can test if that diet is working. We can test it all, right? So what we can see is that 95%, 95, like 95% of the people that have taken a test, taken a test, do not have a good ratio. Mm. It's worse than three to one. Most of the people, like in the US, they have 19 to one or something. In Sweden, it's like 12 to one. Yeah. And the people are taking an omega product usually they tend to have a seven to one mm. so obviously something has happened but it's not three to one so so they, that's kind of my question then would be are you satisfied with having a seven to one and having like eating these capsules and it doesn't apparently work and you're spending lots of money to buy these products but you don't get the benefit you are looking for wouldn't it be better to take something that actually work yeah and you could objectively tell that you're yes. moving in the right direction yes right. please yes yeah i think it's just we don't tend to do that in the u.s like it's actually difficult people myself included don't a first get an objective measurement other than like blood sugar right maybe cholesterol and then even then there's no like hey do this specifically and test again in three months or six months and see what changed with a very specific 
objective. That's the most objective way to be like, does this work, right? You will have specific measurements and there's no, not a lot of wishy-washiness unless someone dramatically changed their lifestyle and does that, in which case, hopefully that would accelerate the change. But it's really nice to have objective markers and specific things to actually take that you don't have to worry about sourcing, right? Sourcing's hard. Like we just yeah. explained, yeah. wild caught fatty fish can be very expensive yeah. if you eat a lot yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a few other products as well within yeah. within that I work with within the same sort of test based nutrition uh, mm. genre. I suppose there's the vitamin D test, and uh, I always say this wrong: the H A B one <laughs> blood sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, the, the one so blood cells. sugar. The one I, yeah. I always mix up the the H B A one C. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Hemoglobin uh, A one C. Yeah, so we have the free uh, tests. Um, you have and one for that as com- well. Yeah, we have that as well. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. Um, and so this it, is a full like, blood blood panel, essentially. You're getting sugar uh, and fatty lipids. Okay. Sure, for those free anyway, you know. And and we have like products connected to that as well. So yeah. like your vitamin D, okay, so you take a test and then uh, you take the, the, the product and then after a few months, you can take another test. It's the same kind of core ID, right? Yeah. Test-based nutrition. But we usually often talk about the omega, uh, the balance oil, and and the yeah. balance test first, right? Uh, so, and there is a page, uh, you know, um, where you can actually see. So, the United States so far, uh, it's we haven't been in the U.S. for so long, a few years only, but we've taken mm. twenty nine thousand nine hundred and sixteen tests. Okay, so almost thirty k. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a bunch. Anyway, the average result is twenty two point six to one. Wow. Yeah, and then. You take the balance oil then for a few months, four months usually. The second test is 3.4 to 1. 3.4? It yeah. drops it down to 3.4 from 22 yeah. on average. Yeah. Wow. That's a almost a 20-point swing in four months. Yeah. And in Sweden, we, we, we began in Sweden. So, so we've done 126,424 tests, right? First test, 10.1 to 1. That's pretty decent. You know, we are, we are ahead of the, of the US. Yeah. The second one is 2.7 to 1. Jeez. But, you know, you can... Uh, Southern Europe. Let's see. Let's see some... Uh, let's see Germany. Okay, Germany is like 106,360 tests. First test is 15.3 to 1. Second one is 2.9 to 1. I wonder why the ratio is so hard to move whenever you start getting down below, it seems like three, right? So once it gets down below three to one, the ratio, well, I guess just because how ratios work, but the number doesn't seem to budge. Like it would, if it's that dramatic of a swing, if you go from 22 in the US down to like 20, that's a huge swing, but then yeah. it would probably get harder and harder and harder to move the ratio down closer to one to one, right? Just because the yeah. amount of actual fatty acid you have to move. Yeah, what I've seen my experience as well that that is seems like a correct interpretation. Well, like you go down to fee something, right, and then you continue with the oil, and maybe after four to six months or something, you take another test. Maybe you have like two point five to right. one. And then you you do this thing for a few more months, and then maybe have one point five to one. So the first swing, like it gives you the 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 clearest results often. Right. right. Um, wow. Why that, that is a dramatic? Like, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I know like the blood cells they change every four to six months. Yeah. So that's when you see start to see the the changes first. Right. Right. And then you have other cells in the body, but they, they don't change as often. So it takes more time to affect them. Yeah. But the, the the tests are from the blood cells, but the blood cells reflect how everything else yeah. looks right. in the bot. It's the, a good litmus the, test. Yeah, it's the first major barometer yeah. of of cellular health. Wow. Okay. I, I can, yeah, I can I'm mention one this. more. <laughs> one more. Yeah, I can mention one more country. Maybe like India. We kind of recently launched in India. It's mm. just last year or something. And. <laughs> You tend to get surprised sometimes when you think, yeah. okay, let's test this country. Would they have good results on average or bad? What do you think India would have? Uh, I mean, India has, has 
while they have high incidences of diabetes just because it's such a carbohydrate rich diet. So I would say that people would assume, and I would have assumed prior to like five years ago that would have had a good ratio, but I'm going to say poor. Yeah. Do, 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 do you dare to give like a number? Oh, uh, India? I'll do like, uh, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm going to say 15. Yeah, 15 maybe, one. maybe 15 you know so so if, to be fair we haven't you know done so many tests in india so far it's like a really small number 1558 right? okay uh and you would need like maybe 10,000 or something yeah. to start to get like a good you know average numbers and you know and and, and the, the the more tests you've done obviously the more the, the more accurate data you right have. okay but having said that the average ratio in india so far is 36 to 1 wow worse than the 36. us yeah, I'm sure they'll come down with more tests, but that is alarming. It is alarming, isn't it? And the second oh. test, then uh, three point nine to one. Okay, so it seems easy, or not easy, but the the balance formula seems really effective at dropping it below five to one, yeah. very quickly. Yeah, so it's it's easy enough to get a lot of omega threes into your body and then working the ratio closer and closer to ideal becomes harder and harder. Yeah. But that's such a huge difference. Four months. These tests are just four months apart. Yeah. Usually four months, like, that's like ridiculous. how it works. It's like someone signs up, you know, I want to try and, and then like in your first order, you get a test, like the first test, right? And then you shipped another bottle of balance oil. It, it depends on where you live, but yeah. sometimes it's like other each second month you get like two bottles or mm. i think in the us you get a bottle each month or something uh so yeah it depends but then usually on month four you get the second test right yeah wow. by mail that's it that's pretty incredible thanks for sharing those numbers i didn't see that i didn't see india coming yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's touchy just traditional indian diets are and I haven't figured this out because they didn't used to have high instances of blood sugar mismanagement, but it's all carbs. It's a ton of pulses, legumes. I'm not speaking for all. I don't know the diet of, of most Indians, but I do know that they have been struggling or large sections struggle with uh, insulin resistance and diabetes in general. So what, what I understood is... is you know true correct uh and also like high amounts of like vegetable oils and, right you know in, in the cooking and stuff um, seed oils yeah seed oils you use the seed oils i suppose maybe then like you use way more seed oils maybe than in india when you start sure. when you cook now rather than what you did 100 years ago or something right so, i'd and, be and curious it, what regions these came from if they're if the tests are regional as in if you tested more um, of a traditional like rural population if it would be dramatically different than in the city like in yeah. the u.s the it would yeah. probably be a bit of a swing from people in the city to maybe people who grew up on ranches or something like that i imagine you know like right. like, they, like, they, like for now like all tests are anonymous uh, yeah right but As but when you, when you send in your details like what you say is like where do you live right, right. what's what's your age group female male and so on so that's kind of why what you base the statistics on Interesting. so we done a, a kind of recently maybe a few months ago we did like one, our one millionth test wow <laughs> so it is the biggest as that's far data, as i know yeah. the biggest database in the world about fat acids wow okay well i'm gonna add myself to that database because now i'm infinitely <laughs> curious and uh, maybe we'll do another one of these whenever I, I have the test come back because, huh, I wonder what I would be happy with. What are you happy with? Do you mind sharing what yours is? Have you done one recently? I think my most recent one was, I should done, I should do another one. I, sh I should have done, when I came back from the US, I should yeah. have done one on the day when I got back. I didn't. Uh, after having like the US diet for a month, I, yeah, I'm sure that right. affected my 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 data. Uh, I remember my last, I think, was that one last? My second test was 2.7 to 1. Nice. Uh, I think my third test might have been 3 point something, like up a bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, these things change, obviously. Sure. Depending on what you eat, you can digress a bit. And, you know, what did you eat? Did you actually use the balance all, all the time and so on? 
I think my fourth test must have been below three again. Right. So so it would be nice to be to like a one to one ratio, right. or at least like two to one ish. Yeah. But at at the moment I I've been upping my dosage quite a lot since I got back from the US. So I should take a test as well. I can take it. Yeah. I can take a test and again, and we can do a new podcast. Episode. I would love to. Well, yeah. when you you done yours as well, let let's do that. Yeah, let's do it again in four months in a, in a show. Yeah. The thing that's fascinating to me that I actually hear and got out of that, which is really hopeful, is that it's not an ingrained lifestyle change. Meaning, if you have an awful ratio, yeah, it, you don't have to like kill yourself over 10 years to work towards better right it's yeah. more easily changed which is really good to hear i i agreed you know i i hear in lots of you know people are asking me okay so for instance like your health coaches can ask me right. okay so do, like is this like the the silver bullet like if you do this thing you don't have to do anything else um or how do you see the test and the and the balance soil together with all the other changes you can make? Like how how can you work with this, right? So my answer to this is basically you know start with the balance soil, but obviously it's not it's not the silver bullet. It doesn't have the whole solution with everything. Like you need to do other things as well. Uh, I I think like if you want to do you know, fitness and movement, maybe you need to add uh, like collagen or whatever, right? So, so there are so many things to work with. It's not the silver bullet. And to have, you know, uh, a good, healthy, positive lifestyle, I imagine maybe you want to do, you know, movement and fitness as well. Maybe you want to change your diet. Maybe you want to eat more primal aligned, which I advocate or more carnivore, whatever, right? So there's so yeah. many things to do, but it's an, it's an important piece of it it's like an important yeah. piece maybe it's even a core piece like an essential piece but it's not the answer to everything right right and, and sometimes this gets misinterpreted because some coaches can ask me and they think this is the solution to everything and they tend to you know i i i, I they don't want to work with a test that can show you these clear results yeah. because they interpret it as this is the solution to everything and if it is it can't be true right right but it's 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 not but it's a big it's a big part of the whole picture 